Last month, we revealed to you our third summer book club read, The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Today, we're talking about the book with some of our book club members. I want to introduce you to Lindsay, Ashley, Blake, and Tracy. Tracy, who's back for another discussion, to talk about this book by Marcus Zusak, inspired by the experiences of his parents as Nazi Germany was being pulled into the Second World War. It's the story of a young girl who is separated from her parents and put into foster care. Her parents are being persecuted for being communists. So at nine years old, Liesel and her young brother, Werner, are to make this trip to a foster family in Germany. And her brother does not survive the trip, a traumatizing event for her that haunts her for years and years as she tries to find a new, no a new normal with the family that takes her in. Uh, one of the early people that we meet is her friend, Rudy, uh, who's next door. That is a complicated friendship that they have. So I want to start uh, with you, Blake, since you've got the microphone that makes mm -hmm. it easy. What did you think about the relationship and, and why these two children were drawn to each other when they seemed to give each other as much grief as they did support? Well, I kind of thought it felt like more like a partnership, mm -hmm. especially since they kind of began the, the whole the thief thing together. Yeah, right. Like, granted, it started when Le Liesl was, you know, much younger, but they really got more into the thieving aspect mm -hmm. once they knew each other and learned how just how the other thought. Mm -hmm. The book Thief, the title, of course, comes from one of the early acts that we see in the book when Liesl's brother is being buried in the winter. Before she leaves his graveside, she notices that one of the grave diggers has dropped a book. She picks it up, and that's the first of many books that she's stolen. And the novel is really about the power of words and how powerful it is for her to have books. And uh, she goes on to continue to steal them. I'm going to ask you to pass the mic over to right. Tracy's. One thing we all talked about in the beginning was that it was hard to get into this book. It was very hard to. Why? For you. Um, first of all, it's not my typical book that I usually pick up. Yeah. So, um, and I really didn't understand that it was death talking. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very important part that you have to realize that death is the one that is talking in the book. Yeah. Um, plus, it doesn't give you a lot of background at first. It just jumps into the story itself. So mm -hmm. you really have to pay attention to what you're reading. Yeah. I had to, had to go back a few times to really understand why was Liesl being separated from her parents. Because mm -hmm. once the bombing of World War II began, it was very common in places like London. All the children were put on trains yes. and sent out yeah. to the countryside. But Germany had not yet been pulled into the war when this book began. So I had a hard time understanding at first why the children were being separated now. I'm going to ask you to pass the uh, microphone to, I'm sorry, oh, you guys are wearing mics. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. All right, <laughs> Ashley, so, so let me ask you about uh, Zuzak's choice to have Def narrate this story versus Liesl herself or, 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 or just the author's voice. I really did enjoy the book, um, The Point of View Coming from Death. It was, it was something different. It's not something that you hear every day. The fact that he was narrating the story of this young girl mm -hmm. and how he interacted with her, even though she couldn't see him, but mm -hmm. he was watching over her mm -hmm. throughout the book. It was, it was really good. Something that death was not typically supposed to do, to really get Correct. involved in human affairs. Um, we mentioned that this book is, it ends up on a lot of reading lists for adolescents. Um, and so let me ask you, Lindsay, do you feel like teaching the events of what was happening in Germany at this time through the story of this girl and her relationships is more effective than the way we normally learn about historical events, which is dates, geographical locations, and tallies. I think it's, I think it's really important for students to understand not just the whens and the whys, but how it actually felt for mm -hmm. the people that were involved in it. I think you get a much better grasp of what it was like to live in Germany or to live in London or to um, be in a concentration camp mm -hmm. if you're reading from people's point of view. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's a fictionalized account, I think makes it slightly easier for younger readers because there's a little bit of distance. It's mm -hmm. not a true story. It could have happened, but maybe it didn't happen mm -hmm. exactly this way. So maybe that makes it slightly easier to get into because it's pretty heavy stuff, mm -hmm. especially for young children. In the beginning, you know, you feel like there has to be some established knowledge. So maybe this would be a good assignment yeah. after the kind of those facts and figures mm -hmm. have yeah. been introduced then to go a little bit more in depth and explore the people, you know, you think of the people who were with or against, you know, the Nazi party. And you don't think about all those people caught in the middle who could not go along 
but it was deadly to go against either. Like Especially from the German perspective. Mm -hmm. The pretending that went on, the pretending and the hiding, whether it was a hiding of a person or a hiding of emotions. All right, we're going to um, talk more about the book thief after a break uh, in just a little bit. We want to thank you guys for being with us. We're glad that you're going to stay with us to talk more about this novel by Marcus Suzak. Much last month, we did reveal, with the help of Ashley Hooks of Barnes & Noble TCC, that our third summer book club read would be The Book Thief by Marcus Susak. And today, we're discussing the book with some of our book club members, and uh, along with Ashley, who's joined our discussion, we have another Ashley, <laughs> Lindsay, Blake, and Tracy back to talk about this book. We need to kind of, I guess, go through the plot a little bit here, because we spent a lot of time in the first part of the book um, about the, the themes. So Lisa goes to her foster family. She makes an important friend in Rudy. There are a lot of pivotal people in her life. Blake, I want to ask you about uh, the importance of, of Max. People compare this book to the diary of Anne Frank, who was written from the perspective of a girl who was a hidden Jew. And until Max comes into the picture, we don't get that story. But how significant was he to Liesl in terms of understanding what was happening for, in the world? Well, the way I saw it was that Max was like, uh, the connection for her like she mm -hmm. to her it was just a distant story of oh this is happening somewhere else I don't know what's happening and then she sees firsthand this uh, just worn worn down scrawny just beaten down kid mm -hmm. he's only 24 in the book yeah and just it made it real for her she went mm -hmm. oh this is something that's happening this is something I just I don't know if I can ignore her. yeah yeah, it, and it made a lot of things click to her, what was going on with her parents and things like that. Mm. Tracy, let me ask you about another person, the mayor's wife. Oh, another wow. example of how, you know, how, that, how she chose to treat Lisa was, was pivot, a pivotal relationship for her. Well, she's the one who actually left the books out. Mm -hmm. And the character went through the windows to grab the books. I think that um, character became pivotal at the end, too, when... Um, she got so mad that she ripped that one book mm -hmm. and she left a note saying, you know, I'm sorry that I ruined your book. And then the mayor's wife came to her and brought her a journal to write in. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that showed the power of the writing. Mm -hmm. So she was a very important character throughout the whole book as well as her husband, yeah. even though he was only mentioned once or twice. They didn't talk, these two, you know, Liesl and the mayor's wife, they didn't no. talk very much, but she was a very steadfast presence for her. It's funny because it's called The Book Thief, but yeah. I really don't think that she stole the books. I mm -hmm. think that they were a gift from the mayor's wife. And even when she knew that, she still went in through the window. She still mm -hmm. needed to keep that consistent. And that was the joke at the end when the mayor's wife went to visit her and give her the journal. Did we go through the door or the window? Yeah. <laughs> I want to ask you um, about, Lindsay, about Rosa Huberman. She was not consistently kind to Liesl. Did it take you a while to realize that she loved her? No, I think I... I think the way that he gets into her character and into their relationship, you can kind of almost tell that it's it's very difficult for her to show that emotion, but mm -hmm. that it's there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you could also tell the way that Liesl reacted to her. It was almost like they were both playing the parts. Mm -hmm. like it wasn't really cruel, and she wasn't really upset about it, but this is how we do this, so mm -hmm. I'll play my part and you play your part. And, you know, as they go into it, um, there's one part where... Rosa needs to get some information to Liesl, and it's some really pivotal information. It's and she goes to school and yells at her. Yeah, she says, you know, I, I know that you you needed to know, and this is the only way that anyone would believe us. Mm -hmm. But it meant so much to her that her mother would come and do that, and yeah. even the way that it was done, it was still sweet. <laughs> it does make you think of the things that you observe between people you don't really know, and how yes. people often have their own language, you know, yes. between each other. In the end, it said Hans Huberman was the person she loved the most. Why do you think he was so important to Liesl? Um, she was, he was the only father figure that she had ever had because she never knew her father growing up. Mm -hmm. And then she was ripped away from her mother and her brother. And he was the first person that she really trusted and he looked after her. And he came and sat by her bed at night when she had her nightmares every night. He never left her. Mm -hmm. he, just, he made that bond of trust with her. Mm -hmm. And that was really important. And in the end, only one of those special people was still, uh, actually, I guess we could say two people were still in her life, the mayor's wife and Max eventually comes mm -hmm. in, which may surprise people that Rudy was not there when all the dust um, settled. Um, but for how that relationship came to an end and what happened to Rudy, you're going to have to read the book. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Ashley will give us the details on our n another uh, Hampton Roadshow, very special reading selection for September. So don't go away. We'll be right back.